Alright, hello everyone, welcome, this is Budcast episode 16. Uh, I'm Steve Bud here, today I got a special guest, it's Mr. Red Rupee. Hey, what's going on guys? I like to be here for the Sweet 16. Sweet 16, oh yeah, that's right. What'd you get me, bro? Oh, I got you a nice replay featuring Holy Hammer and Riku Russ, even though you pointed it out to me, so yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get you anything, I'm sorry. I guess your, your presence is my present. Ah, wordplay. That's terrible. <laughs> Go with it, though. All right, yeah, so for uh, today, just a quick little replay. We got Holy Hammer here in the bottom right on uh, Lord General, and we got uh, Mr. Rico Russ up the top left on uh, Mr. Warboss. So what are your kind of uh, initial thoughts, maybe opinions on this matchup, maybe on this map? Uh, I mean, I feel like I feel like Lord General is, is solid here. I mean, it's big and spread out, so he'll have time to kind of run around and dodge the shooter spam at the beginning. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, and plus, I mean, Sentinels are good on this map because there's not a lot of crap for them to get stuck on. That's that's always a big deal. Like especially like uh, what Outer Reaches is like notoriously <laughs> just difficult Shitty to pathing, keep the vehicle yeah. alive on. So. And uh, I don't know. I mean, and and you know, it's Hammer. So if you don't know who Hammer is at this point, uh, go. Go check out some... I mean, you gotta know who Hammer is. He's yeah. he's the top guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely an amazing player. I'm really uh, excited to see this match. Uh, I know Mr. Rico Russ is, is really good, too. He he beat me, like, four times in a row, like, about a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's always a rough fight. I, I, I can't really contend with these guys generally, so saying they can beat me doesn't really say too much, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah. All right, let, let's, let's uh, get this replay going. I'm at five seconds, so we'll start in three, two, one... Go. Alright, so Holy Hammer starts off with a Sentinel in his build queue, which is uh, probably going to be followed up by a second Guardsman. Kind of standard IG at this point. And, uh, yeah, especially on a big map. I mean, you're mm -hmm. going to want that Sentinel to run around and get the harass in on a larger map like this, where you can isolate squads on their own. Yeah, and uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Rico Russ is going for the Shooter Boy, probably followed up with a second Shooter Boy. Or, yeah, that's sorry, that was a second Shooter Boy. <laughs> so, yeah, he's going the standard two shooters which is uh expected uh his holy hammer is ig and he he might have even seen the uh sentinel break some cover on his way out of uh holy hammer's base so maybe he got clued in a little bit yeah that's always a little trick you can do if you're always curious when fighting ig you can kind of just map over where you think the front of the base is going to be and just see if anything starts breaking then you know that sentinel's on the field quick yeah. but unfortunately Mr. Rico Russ sending his sluggers right over to that sentinel anyways, and they're not going to be able to do anything. There goes the stomp, and the sluggers have to fall back. Yeah, Holy Hammer did kind of get lucky with the uh, slug placement here. Uh, he kind of expected these two shooters to kind of be uh, over on the west side of the map, so... Uh, yeah, uh, good sentinel placement. He might even get this little power node down eventually. Yeah, that's going to take a while for the Sentinel on his own, but that's exactly what he wanted to do. He could be decapping that uh, VP right there. I think that might be a little more advantageous, but he's yeah. going to whittle away at the power node for now. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't exactly know where the shooter boys are. They could be, uh, they could have been rotating back, but that's not the case. Rico Russ is pushing them towards Holy Hammer's natural, upgrading one of them with big shooter, so he's going to try and get a little bit of a gen harass off right now. Yeah, this is that early orc push that, as really any player, you have to be concerned with those double big shooters coming down on your power uh, pretty much before the first engagement can even happen. And with just Guardsman and the Lord General, he's not going to be able to stop that. He's bringing the Sentinel in, though. Well-placed stomp could really push this threat off. Yeah, I mean, um, let's see. Warboss really isn't going to do that much. Maybe delay the Sentinel from getting the stomp off. Uh, it's high up the squad. But yeah... Looks like the Orc player is going to have to get off the field here pretty soon. I think that was actually a really good play by Hammer. If you noticed, uh, the one squad of big shooters had just used aiming what's that on the Lord General, so he knew that they were not outputting any damage, and the Sentinel had a break to move in and get the stomp off without taking too much in the ways of, uh, in the ways of fire from them. Yeah, I mean, Holy Hammer, um, he did uh, also not build any gens right away. Because he kind of saw that little uh, shoot a push coming, since the sluggers were on the right side of the field. Um, yeah, and I and he got to kind of use that extra money to buy some uh, catachins right off the bat. 
Yeah, that's a. I feel like that's kind of a mistake that some people make. I know a lot of people get scared about that early orc tech and that truck hit in the field before you can do anything about it. But if you drop those two gens and the shooter boys come in and smash them, then all you did was cost yourself yeah. uh, unneeded wreck, you know? Yeah, I've played so many orc players where I just throw away wreck on early gens because I'm so used to it. But yeah, really good by Holy Hammer to kind of avoid that. Even though he was successful in kind of preventing any gen harass, his, he didn't even lose his node. But let's see, both both shooter boys are upgraded with big shooters, one of which has the uh, commando, or not the commando, the uh, knob upgraded sergeant. So he's going to be able to kind of see any uh, uh, explosive devices from these catachins uh, when he does use them. Yeah, I think that's that's another kind of common oversight. You see players tend to just see catachins and not worry about getting a detector's. It's like, oh, I don't want to get rangers against Imperial Guard, or I don't need a scout sergeant to throw grenades. Yeah. But it's like, hey, that IED is in your retreat path or in your attack path. You can see a good defensive placement right here by the power farm. Mm -hmm. You're going to regret not having that detector. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, you can always put it in your own retreat path if you're trying to be a little more passive with it, if your opponent does have a lot of stealth detection. And you can use it with uh, against chasing sluggers or something, since this is war boss, and he, we might see that eventually. So, yeah, really good use by Holy Hammer of this uh, IED from the catch, and, and uh, yeah, he's gonna use it a lot more this match. And if Rico just keeps sending the sluggers over here when he knows the sentinels there. I'm not sure he's looks like he's moving in. I'm not sure if he just sent the sluggers there to try to waste that stomp so the shooters could fire away. It's on the run now, but getting pursued by Warboss and Ooh. the Shooters. Oh, Warboss doing a special attack, not really denying that Sentinel uh, pathing. Let's see if he gets out. Oh man, it's at 60 HP if those Sluggers get a couple more swings, but it's clear Ooh. running ahead. But they're going to have to retreat through the Catachins if Holy gets lucky. He might take out the Sluggers right here. Ooh. There goes one, two, three models. Down to one model. He stops to shoot, and the Slug is... Down to 30 health, make it out alive. So both players getting pretty lucky there. Sentinel down to like 30 HP, and same with these sluggers. Yeah, so each player kind of just uh, avoided a disastrous uh, play. So still pretty balanced uh, as far as this game goes so far. Yeah, VPs are still pretty neck and neck. 30 mm. point difference, no big deal. Sentinel getting healed up, but. Holy Hammer's making a push here, making this little passive aggressive power push right here, putting the Sentinel up front and healing. Yeah, I mean, I almost would rather have him wait a little bit, maybe to have his second Catachin back him up. Because um, investing so much in Tier 1, you're pretty much guaranteed to have uh, a, a little power harass here going into Tier 2. But uh, he might be able to get uh, pull it off with, even without the second Catachin, we'll see. Warball's getting low, has to fall back. And as you were saying, with Holy Hammer getting that second Catagen squad, I'm not sure if he's going to regret that or not. With Holt, with uh, Rico Russ, uh, yeah. you know, almost a Tier 2 already, that quick trucker, whatever he brings out, whatever Tier 2 tech he brings onto the field, could really, uh, really hit Hammer hard if he doesn't manage to keep up and kind of make up that tech difference here. Yeah, it, it's pretty much essential for him to get this power farm down since he did invest so much. Ooh, and let's see the Slugger boys chasing down Lord General. What's he going to do? He oh, like they're getting close to the danger zone. Oh, oh wow. Down to two, two oh. models, Slugger Boys. Brutal. Yeah, Brutal. yeah they're not going to do much to that defense <laughs> farm anymore. <laughs> yeah, sending some guardsmen to kind of clear up those Sluggers. Sentinel's still being pretty, uh, pretty ballsy over here. I mean, I wouldn't even have left those in if it were me. I would have pulled them around to the west, and because, yeah, look at their retreat path. They're going to mm -hmm. go right the center, and look what's waiting for them. A squad of catatons. Right oh, let's see. It's going to get one with melee. Old Faithful. Stomp. Something. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Oh, man. Orc bits. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean... Uh, losing a slug against IG is almost like inevitable. You're gonna do it eventually. <laughs> I don't know. That's just kind of my feeling as orc. But yeah, um, Mr. Rika Russ coming out with a war truck, throwing his shooters in him, and it looks like he's kind of gonna go sentinel hunting. He's either gonna go for the sentinel or go for the, the power. power? Farm. Yeah. I feel like the power farm is more a guaranteed win. 
but uh, looks like he's got that Sentinel way out of position, and he yeah. knows he can get out. It's going to try to get out of there. Weird boy on one side, truck full of shooters on the <laughs> other. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did kind of see it going for his natural wreck, so uh, instead of trying to be super aggressive and lose that wreck, he's going to try and even yeah, gank this Sentinel. He might even do it. He's getting awfully close. If he unloads right now, he might be able to just pour one solid salvo yeah. into it. Nice. Yeah, man. So yeah, both players down one squad at this point here in tier two. Um, yeah, Mr. Rico Rust though going tier two a little little quicker than Holy Hammer has two uh, tier two units. He's got the he's got the weird boy and the truck, so he's gonna be able to be really aggressive at this point. Oh, kind of wasting that warp bomb out on the yeah. weakened squad already, though. I would have used that on the full health squad and focused it down with the shooters. Still in a good position to push here, though. Although, with that Chimera coming on the field, Rico does not have an answer to that, really. All he can do is kind of pepper away with that weird boy until he gets some more solid AV on the field. Yeah, and boy, I'm, if see. that Chimera just uh, if that Chimera loads up with both squads and just unloads the Catagens next to the mm -hmm. weird boy, don't take him out in one volley of shotgun fire. Yeah, totally. Especially if one like even knocks him down, he's guaranteed kill. And yeah, Rico Russ going for the little bit of uh, gen harass, buddy. But uh, Holy Hammer just has all of his forces just right here, so he's gonna be unsuccessful. He's trying to get a couple picks off. Oh, got uh, a couple Catagens. Those are expensive. Yeah, he's just trying to keep them jumping in and out of the uh, the war truck. But, uh, I mean, Holy Hammer's gonna do the same thing with his Guardians. Yeah, still no upgrades on Lord General or War Boss, so both Vanilla just kind of running around capping the map. Um, Holy Hammer using his Chimera, pushing a little bit on Mr. Rikoros' natural power. Let's see if he can actually do anything. Catechins are getting their upgrades too, so that truck's oh, yeah. gonna have to be a lot more careful once those Meltas hit the field. You can see, I mean, with a truck, you don't even have to get a super hard AV counter. If so, you can just deal with those Catechin Meltas and keep it off the field, or at least keep it intimidated enough to stay away from you. Yeah. Ooh, but uh, Tank Bus is out. Uh, Holy Hammer doesn't see it yet, so oh, this volley... Shot! Yes. Right off your armor! Oh, man! Wow. There's volley to finish it off. Perfect shot <laughs> by Rico Russ. Yeah. That kind of... Oh, that's a big loss. I mean, it's especially hurtful to lose a vehicle that quickly, even getting a zap off on retreat. Ooh, a nice uh, kill on the war boss there by those Katishins. Uh, um, Rika Russ was a little bit distracted there with the tank buses, but yeah, you have to be so careful playing against Orc using a transport vehicle in the beginning of Tier 2 before you really see um, really where your opponent is or have any kind of line of sight where, like, you know, tank buses might be hiding out. So I, I've picked off, like, a million transports just like uh, Rico Rush just did. So you have to be really careful. Yeah, before you either get an extra level or two or have some sort of armor upgrade on your yeah. goal. I mean, as we saw, those tank busters can just annihilate it. And now here goes some power as well. Tank busters, pretty adept at taking that out. Mm -hmm. Little old faithful, not gonna do that much. Probably a second one. Ooh. And uh, Volley missing the second Catastrophe. Oh, well, there was one lone yeah. Catechin that just got obliterated in the middle of all that. Ooh, and Lord General Global's going off here in the retreat path. Ooh. Wow. That looks awesome. Getting some, like, nice kills, but unable to knock any squads down to kind of guarantee a, uh, a couple more kills from the Catechins or Guardsmen or something. Yeah, but just just pushing all of them off and saving. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. That tower is a big deal. Ooh, and this war shark has to be careful. Awful close to these catechins. Oh, getting no, kind of stuck in the corner. Oh, is he gonna get out? Down to thirty. Yeah, little, little catechin model with the laser. It's kind of far away. Yeah, so he's gonna make it out, but he still doesn't have any uh, sluggers to, to really repair that. So uh, yeah, he's gonna either have to oh, make some more. Geez. I think I think uh, I think Holy Hammer just accidentally exploded his catechins there. They didn't quite place the fuse right on their uh, <laughs> ID. Oh yeah, I missed that. Uh, but yeah, his catechins just going down to six models, low health. <laughs> Those IDs, man, they're dangerous. 
It is kind of a, a tricky UI. If you, if you even accidentally click on it, it explodes. Yeah. So I think that may have been what happened. <laughs> Anikor on the field now, though, up on the up on the, his uh, natural VP. The, I wouldn't even honestly move it that far out with tank busters on the field. I, I'm be paranoid. Yeah, but he does have these guardians or these guardsmen, uh, kind of in front of the uh, the mana core, So. It's kind of line of sight. Upgraded with plasma as opposed to getting the commissars. I feel like mm. plasma isn't going to do that much of a difference against orc, whereas the commissars would be more useful. Yeah, probably. I, don't, I mean, maybe he's just really uh, worried about this weird boy and trying to gank it really quickly. I don't know, but mana core shot going off, ma uh, forcing a master tree here from uh, Rico Russ. That truck is still super low. I'm just waiting for it to get picked. Yeah, without those sluggers to repair, I mean, you kind of shrug off losing your sluggers at the beginning of the game, but as the game goes on, you always end up regretting it. It's sitting yeah. in range, too. Katachin's oh. putting it in on it. Why yeah, is there it goes. just sitting there? Oh, no. And that's the end of the truck. Yeah. Ooh, so we got a kind of an early knob coming out from Rico. Kind of just went straight for Tier 3. Uh, didn't really bother build anything else in Tier 2. Uh, I mean, I guess he did build a lot, but... Yeah, uh, but he had the tech advantage from the start and managed yeah. to knock out that Chimera right away. So it really just bought him all the time he wanted to just head straight into Tier 3. Yeah, so we got one catching up here by Rico's Natural. Trying to get a little bit of a power harass going. It's pretty low, though. It's going to have to be careful. Ooh, nice tank buster volley. Oh, getting oh, them so man. low. A Zap might be able to finish that squad off. Oh, but the Shooter oh. Boys are just going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, those are done. One health catch and goes down to a freaking tank buster volley, followed up by Zap and some shooter boy fire. Wow, that was just. Uh, Holy Hammer definitely did not really see that one coming. That tank buster barrage does a surprising amount of damage to those high yeah. model count Imperial Guard squads. Yeah, only downside with those tank busters is that ability does cost a lot of red, so. Uh, especially going a uh, knob squad, he can't really do both. Uh, the meaner and greener uh, invulnerability and the tank buster volley too many times. All those knobs may have skirted too close to that Ooh. point. I think Holy Hammer may have seen them, but now the mana core is just sitting there, doesn't know. Uh -oh. <laughs> They're moving in. Yeah, Holy Hammer going around for the ninja kill on the mana core. Let's see if he can get it. Uh, Holy Hammer's kind of focused, a little distracted because he is being a little aggressive, but yeah, he does see it. That, that power farm is going down though, so it'll be worth it, especially if he saves this mana core. Yeah, ooh, but I think if the knobs would have gone around on uh, the right of this little rock, he, he might have been able to get a couple hits off. Knobs are gonna go for it though, it looks like. <laughs> They're gonna just hit the meaner and greener as soon as yep, those turn. Yep, there they go. Oh, hit it a little early, I think. Oh, oh nice global! Right. Oh, just saving that mana core's life. Forcing those uh, knobs like back off. Too, does it right. Oh, look at this! <laughs> oh, didn't quite hit it spot on. Fired a little too close, but if that had hit... Oh, uh, that would have been awesome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Rico Russ having um, a pretty big force here in mid. Getting back his uh, both the VPs. He did lose his natural gen, but he's coming back. He's going to be a little bit aggressive. He has those knobs up there on uh, Holy Hammer's natural. He brought the war truck back on the field too. I yeah. don't know why that mana core is sneaking back out there. He's a little too aggressive with that. He's getting a couple of machine gun hits off, man. Duh. <laughs> but uh, Rico really needs to play it tight. He is down by about 250 VPs. Once you start getting around that 100 point mark, you gotta start being nervous about getting out on the field and staying out there. Mm -hmm. He does have this war boss going in for the ninja cap on the VP, but so this mana core shot goes off. Unfortunately, the oh. war boss is not very ninja. Oh wow! And he, he wow, oh, he gets nice the shot. he gets the truck with the mana core. Oh man! Down if he can target the right one. I think there was just too much going on uh, there for him to last. Yeah, I nice, nice, myself. yeah, nice oh, warp on it though. <laughs> oh man, that was a really nice use of the mana core in two uh, kind of clutch plays in a row by uh, Holy Hammer. So awesome with that mana core. I hear you. Now a lot of people forget. I mean, I I am criticizing. I, I I'm not really criticizing. I'm just saying it makes me nervous when he moves it up. But a lot of people forget that the rockets do actually fall a lot, a lot quicker. quicker. Yeah. At point blank range, when you're on the inside of that circle, they drop almost instantly. You can't even. You just have to hit retreat if you see that mm -hmm. red circle. And wow, Holy Hammer is just floating a lot of wreck right now. So he has a. Uh, 
Yeah, he's gonna just spend it there on the stormtrooper. Grab <laughs> <laughs> the situation with the always power, uh, power non-intensive rather. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it makes no sense to kind of just have all that float for no reason. So yeah, good choice with the stormtroopers, just clearing up some wreck, and uh, Rika Russ going for the death dread. Uh, just kind of throw it out there, maybe back up his uh, knobs a little bit more. Oh, I'm excited to see a Death Dread. I never get to see Death Dreads, especially, I mean, when's the last time you saw an orc in Tier 3? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ooh, nice, ooh. nice mana core hit on that shooter, getting it pretty low. The knob is the only one that gets out of there. Oh no, he's got one little injured orc with him. Let's see, Kadishans. Getting hit up in the middle of those knobs, though, going for the mana core again, it looks like. Oh, I wanted to see him combine the knockback from the Weird Boy with the Tank Buster Barrage. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, and the <laughs> mana core goes down to the knobs nice. with their meaning and Finally, buffs. Picked Finally off. yeah. Without that mana core, it's going to be a lot harder for Holy Hammer to maintain the map control that he has yeah. been thus far. Now he's just kind of throwing those knob squads. Uh, into Holy Hammer's face and uh, kind of clearing up some time for this Death Dread to do a little bit of power harass. It's Lord General though, ninja capping a little bit of uh, Rika Russ's backfield. Yeah, I mean, when you get to this point in the game, all you have to really be worried about is keeping the orc wreck starved. The power yeah. doesn't even matter too much at this point. Dude, the weird boy just wrecking face oh, here on this man. little choke point. Zap is just bouncing around and taking chunks of HP off of squads here. That but death trait trying to <laughs> get in melee, it's struggling, but I don't think it's gonna make it. They're gonna turn around and fire one shot. Yeah. Ooh, nice tank buster barrage, but uh, a little off to the oh, right man, there. Oh man, he it. lets it go! A little distraction by the oh, tank yeah. buster from the weird boy and manages to get that death trait out of there. Unfortunately, he still doesn't have yeah, any. Yeah, he's not gonna last very much longer though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yep, so Rika Russ is capping up uh, his kind of left field here, but uh, he does sacrifice that Death Dread, and uh, freaking Layman Russ coming out here from Holy Hammer. Um, yeah, so it's going to be able to do some damage while hiding those knobs. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a really good choice from Holy Hammer. I mean, and when he ha he really has like his only AV as the Tank Busters, you want him to kind of split the red um, usage between the Tank, tank Buster Barrage. And the, the Vanquisher can, which yeah. looks like it's gonna pay oh, off. Yeah. There's yet another war truck coming onto the field. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't get Vanquisher. Uh, I would get the Executioner, uh, since he does have knobs. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. such a heavily based infantry army. I'm not sure if he's expecting an orc tank or maybe a battle wagon, but uh, he's gotta know that after all the after the Death Dread and everything else that uh, Rico's been bought buying rather. Yeah. Uh, that the battle wagon is not going to be a super threat yet. Yeah, I mean, I would probably just keep it vanilla, maybe even, if he didn't want to devote it to anti-infantry. But uh, yeah, he's going to rock that Vanquisher uh, cannon for a minute here. Let's see if it pays off. So yeah, he's getting a little bit of midfield map control back. Um, Rico Russ kind of just chilling, waiting uh, for all of his units to kind of group up. So yeah, he's going to have to make a pretty big push here pretty soon. Oh, and he's going for the looted tank, which is probably not the greatest idea, given the Lehman Russ. Uh, Has he seen sure. the Lehman Russ yet? I'm not sure if you saw that. I think he did. I mean, he did cancel his truck, so maybe he just canceled it for a different reason. I don't know. I mean, he but has here comes yeah. the big orc push right now, and he's kind of got to make this push here because he's down to 80 VPs. He closed the gap a little bit, but he's starting to lose it again. Just using that tank buster volley on uh, the guardsman. See, no other upgrades for the weird boy. Not gonna throw the knobs into anything. They might hit this IED, maybe not. Oh no, it just barely misses. Yeah, Holy Hammer's gonna have to get out of here pretty soon. Only has guardians in this tank. Yeah, those guardsmen are just kind of hanging out there. I don't know what they're in. Kind of Layman Russ is going to go down to the uh, usually chopper knob squad. Really, uh, didn't really want to see that happen. <laughs> no, I mean, it had just come out. You never want to lose a vehicle before it can do any damage because then it's just a solid waste of all those resources. But, yeah. man, and, and it was upgraded with the Vanquisher cannon, so that's a huge loss for Holy Hammer at this point in the game. 
with that tank now on the field and the war truck coming as well, he's going to be hard pressed to try to get this center VP back at yeah, all. Yeah, it's looking really bad for Holy Hammer. I mean, uh, I don't know if it was pathing or if it was him trying to micro some other squads at the same time. But yeah, he shouldn't have lost that there to the to the knob squad. But you know, shit happens. Yeah, you kind of have to babysit. <laughs> like the the only the only weakness of knobs is knockback. So you really got to mm -hmm. make sure you're babysitting your tank with your catechins yeah. at that point because you have to have that knockback yeah, yeah. round when they pop their frenzy. Yeah, so Rikaros is just going to sit here on this middle VP. Uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, kind of difficult for Holy Hammer to break this kind of defensive line, but he's going for it. Let's see if he can do it. Stormtroopers moving in on the tank. Shooter Boy is pretty low, but here comes a charge by the Warboss plowing oh. through all guardsmen. Oh, I've seen that. Uh, nice zap from Rico. Yeah, Rico's just playing it safe, moving the tank back when he needs to, mm -hmm. moving the knobs in after most of the range damage is forced off the field. Yeah. But there's just not much that Hammer can do at this point. He's just lost, I mean, he's lost three vehicles so far and a squad of catechins. He's been doing some good damage to Rico, but Rico still has most of his stuff on the field. Ooh, and he drops the layman, Russ. Uh... But right in front of the <laughs> squad of knobs, though. Oh, use your choppers, activate on those knobs. Oh, oh and the tank shot. Rooted. Oh, that's gotta be no. the game there. <laughs> oh, and it goes down to a headbutt from the knob uh, <laughs> sergeant there. Oh, I man. Mean, you, gotta, you gotta respect a guy that can just headbutt the tank. <laughs> yeah, no big deal, just just headbutt the tank. <laughs> he, he does have those horns on his uh, helmet. Anti-vehicle <laughs> anti, anti -vehicle horns. Yeah, and Holy Hammer uh, calling the GG, leaving the game. Wow, I mean, that, after yeah. lose two tanks back to back like that, I mean, that was just an unfortunate time to drop. I mean, he wasn't <laughs> in a great position right there either way, but he didn't have to drop that tank. He had the VP advantage. He could have kind of regrouped at his base and then made one final push. Yeah, I mean, he did really just get really unlucky with uh, either pathing or w what have you with losing both of those tanks. It was pretty back and forth match for most of it. I mean, up until kind of the tier three mark. Or it started to go really into Rikaros' favor. Yeah, Rico just kept his tech advantage throughout the entire game, and losing, I mean, I feel like losing the Manticore and then losing the <laughs> that was kind of the final nail. I mean, Rico did get a really nice play taking out those Catechins early, and that certainly made a difference. Yeah. But it, it was really just the, the unfortunate vehicle losses for Holy Hammer being a bit too... Uh, yeah, it was Chimera, Manticore, both tanks just really easily taken out by Rico Russ. So yeah, good game. Really good use of the tank busters here from Rico. I really like the way he did it. Um, yeah, Holy Hammer sticking in there, but unfortunately it's going to be a Rico Russ's game. So yeah, this has uh, been Budcast episode 16. I am Steve Bud, and uh, yeah, my special guest, Red Rupee. Catch you guys next time. Yep, yep. Thanks for watching everyone. Budcast episode 16. See you next time.